when you see this, is it Mercedes S-Class? Well, in this case, it's now the Mercedes EQS. It was supposed to be the electric S-Class, but then reviewers and customers said, we don't think so. So Mercedes is trying to change that right now and we'll find out if it's true, if the EQS is now finally the electric S-Class. As Thomas and Gefühl, in 4K, full screen, full length, let's go with the newly designed front. This is a standard front as in the electric art line. AMG line would still get the star here inside the grill without the standing star. That's standard now, the electric art is standard. You get the star on top of the hood. Yeah, they maybe went back in that direction. So there was a time where they removed it everywhere actually. And now you've maybe recently seen even put that on the V-Class now. Yeah, and then also this front graphic, it is still a closed grill, but this graphic you see here is also the same graphic that is used on the Mercedes S-Class and the standard trim and so on, maybe like even an E-Class exclusive line or so on. So this is supposed to give you more classic Mercedes vibes, although you have this raindrop design for the best aerodynamic efficiency. Obsidian black is the color here today. This is also a special edition. We're soon going to take a look at the interior because interior changes are also crucial for the EQS. Length is 5 meters 22 or 205 inches. 19 to 22 inch wheels. These here are 21 inch and they already look really massive. The design indeed has been criticized because of the short hood. And you have this overlapping design. You cannot really open that. There's no frunk underneath. They store the HEPA filter there. The only thing you can open is here this um, side small hatch here for the wiper fluid. Yeah, this is always an interesting feature to show. And then it has this bow design once again. And in black, of course, well, here against the black background, it's always problematic to show. Air suspension, of course, and rear axis steering is standard. 4.5 degrees would be the standard in the opposite direction and optional up to 10 degrees. You can buy that directly, but you also can subscribe to that later on. Yeah, and I'm always not a fan of that system because the hardware you always buy for the rear axle steering is just that you buy it then later on for the software, you know. So yeah, I think that's customer ripoff in my opinion. Towards the rear, we can see this, you know, spiral design with the tail limbs, light strip goes all the way through. This is here the EQS 580. This is the top all-wheel drive trim. So you either get the rear drive model, the 350. You also get all-wheel drive models then in 450, 500 or 580. And the most efficient or the most, you know, like the long range one would be the 450 plus. That is then the one with rear drive, but with the big battery. And talking about the battery changes there, you now get once again a smaller version, the 350, small battery, but now at 96 kilowatt hours net. So it's an increase of six kilowatt hours and the big battery now at 118 kilowatt hours net. That's really large, 10 kilowatt hour increase. So we can now calculate with a real world range of some 600 kilometers or 370 miles. It always depends on summer, winter time, of course, and how you reuse the vehicle. So I pick like an average realistic value then in between. So, but this is also definitely one of the highest range vehicles overall. There was, however, a huge problem so far with the pre facelift, and that was the range in winter time. And at that time, I always said, guys, you need a heat pump. They first, yeah, maybe the residual heat from the electric systems is enough and so on. And I always said like, no, we definitely need a heat pump. A couple of years later, then they saw, yeah, that's probably true. And then they introduced with the EQE SUV. Now, you know, they all get the updates and also the EQS. Well, is it really a facelift? It's more a model year change, but there are some significant changes. Now standard heat pump, because so far you had in winter time, like, like half the range of summertime. This is supposed to change right now. And of course, when we drive the car later on, we will also test it in winter time to see if that is true with these changes now. Recharging, peak 170 kilowatt for the small battery, 200 kilowatt peak DC for the big battery. 
electric charging flap. That means here for the big battery, 31 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge. The acceleration figures, by the way, differ a little bit from the rear drive model, the 350, 6.7 seconds. Yeah, it's an airport close by, even though it doesn't look like it. And here then the 580 4Matic is at 4.4 seconds. You want it even quicker? Yes, there's still the EQS AMG version. Turning indicators in the front here, very wide. That looks pretty cool. And I would like to know from you, with this changed design, does it change your whole opinion of the EQS or has it remained the same? Do you think it's beautiful? Has it been beautiful? Is it now? I would really like to hear your feedback on that right now. Turning indicators in the rear look like that. Yeah, also quite nice. When I look at this braking light, I also think about braking and recuperation. And what they have done now, you can pick different recuperation modes. The standard setting would be the normal, the D mode, which doesn't have so much recuperation, then you can change it with the pedals and you can even change it to a stronger recuperation. And the strongest recuperation mode has now been made even stronger that now offers a true one pedal driving feeling. However, the thing is that when you restart the vehicle due to, you know, it's just regulation thing, it goes back into the original mode again. So it's not a last mode mechanism. Key fob looks like this. It's very good actually. Door hands, either you press it open here, this flush door, or you can also slide and they open and yeah, nice illumination. I mean, it looks spectacular, but I'm more a fan of, let's say like simplified door handles. Door closing sound, it sounds good. Has even some G-Class wipes, although it is a frameless one actually. Dual insulation, you can feel that. And also has here a soft touch, mm -hmm. magic. Then inside of the doors, interesting design. Look at that ambient lighting. Then this um, new text material is like a neoprene like material. It's like a mix of microfiber and leatherette. It's really cool actually. I love that ambient lighting integration right here. Just a high gloss black that I'm not the biggest fan of. Also soft material here inside of the door pockets. And then we have special manufacture styling here with that white steering wheel, matte wood, black contrast on the inside. Cockpit overview, wow, look at that ambient lighting once again. You can also have this transition, so different colors are available. Neotex material on top of the dash. This here, the hyper screen, is now standard for all versions of the EQS and also the EQS SUV. Before that, you could also get a base version with the vertical screen right here and deco element. Here now, screen, screen, screens. So you here also have this passenger screen, and as I said, it's now standard for all the uh, all the EQS models. If it's that useful to have it, yeah, that's maybe up for discussion. Definitely, really screaming out. Temperature control is always here in the lower part. It always stays here in the lower part. That's good that it doesn't go away or something. So it's more or less straightforward to control. And also the infotainment system is quite responsive. This one here then with the Mad wood, that's pretty cool. Open cell, there we go. These cup holders are not that ideal because when you have higher and heavy bottles, they wobble around a little bit. Inductive charging pad in the front, USB-C charging. Then here the start-stop button to put on the ignition. Split opening, more space underneath, USB-C chargers. Oh, look at that, even ambient lighting in the seats. That's amazing. The seats themselves, by the way, you get two different kinds of seats, either a comfort seat or a sport seat. Sport seat in the AMG line, there is microfiber available in some markets. The base comfort seat would also be available with Artico, the hybrid leatherette in Germany. All other markets, basically not. And this one then is like a you know, special luxury seat based on the comfort seat, but with a different design. And you can see it has this, this kind of like this overlapping layer design. Yeah, so they don't offer animal skin alternatives for most markets and for the most trims. And that's of course in this like, hey, we do this luxury EV, which is most sustainable in our company. Definitely a fail. They need to offer animal skin alternatives. Headroom is really close, 189 or 6 for 2. So this leaves hardly anything because the roof fan is so low to achieve this great efficiency as for the aerodynamics, really has a low CD value. Steering wheel up and down, in and out. So this is also a quite smooth process and 
hear the pedals, they change the recuperation, of course, not the gears. By the way, if you want to, we have these additional interior lights in here, and I just used some uh, black tape here on this side, not that you want that it would belong to the car, because there's, you know, like the countering light wouldn't be good for the camera, so I just used the tape in here. I think, you know, this ceiling with the microfiber is really beautiful, and this panoramic roof, you can still actually open. You know that some vehicles, they do not have that anymore. They just have fixed panoramic roofs. This one here still has one you could actually open. On the steering wheel, you have these hashtag capacitor BS buttons. So it means you slide here, but you can also press and get some kind of feedback at least, but it's like one field. Here in the home button, you get in the instruments, control it, you can change the view, for example, screen full screen like map sorry map full screen or here sport view or this so-called understated view hmm that looks interesting another problem of the eqs was the rear seating comfort and this was a part where everyone said that's not really an s-class comfort in the rear so they also worked on that already before this very change here they worked on the base rear bench change something of the ergonomics so for example see here you can also get this overlapping layer design then here for the rear seats and this very vehicle is equipped with the executive seating plus so it's an additional package around 4,000 euros that can do even more so let's dig into the details so first of all <clears throat> we also have these cushions here eqs cushions they are actually quite soft microfiber but they're more for the lower part here because this is a rather hard part than here on the on the lower part so this is covered then you also have these microfiber cushions for your head and they are indeed really comfortable i like that and if i use it without the lower cushion yeah that's indeed it's okay but not ideal i would say so definitely the rear comfort has been improved but would I say that it's really idea, ideal in S-Class like? Mm, not quite. Headroom is kind of close, but works actually, although the roof line is low. And then there's another thing. You have a new footrest, actually, at the moment. It's not visible that well, but I'll show you very, show you very soon. Because you now also have here, with the Executive Seating Pro, this button one press and then the front seat goes forward it was not possible before it does not fold out a footrest like in the mercedes e-class or something this is just you know like like a storage thing so you, do, you could do it like this but yeah maybe not ideal but then you also have this one here now like a new footrest you can put this one then underneath the seat a little bit like that and then your feet are rested like this Definitely a big improvement, yes. Yeah, but I wouldn't call that it's like one-to-one -one on level of a, like no Mercedes S-Class or BMW 7 Series and so on. Then here you can fold down. Now this maybe needs to be, you know, fixed a little bit better here inside, but it's also one of the earliest models, I have to say. Then you can fold on this, more storage underneath, another inductive charging pad. This additional screen here definitely mirrors once again what you see in the front. And you can see when I use it there, it actually does the same thing also than here in this uh, rear screen. It's everything wire touch. If it's really needed, that's another thing. You can also put this one here out, put this one here on eject like this and put it in again. Here we go, and then we also have cup holders we can fold out like this. So that's then possible. And we can put this whole thing up again. You can also sit here on the middle part. So we also have additional seat bed. The middle tunnel, well, it's just a slight step like this. Yeah, but it's definitely harder to sit here on the middle part. And once again, if you want to go everything reverse, you need to put this one here a little bit forward and then press one button again, and then the seat also comes towards you and doesn't take too long actually yeah, this shouldn't be you know like squeezed in here you should really have to pull it towards you this footrest there we go yeah, because the seat is actually quite low then for your feet so the legroom you have basically it's okay also when tall people are driving but it's not 
too much over. So you want to think here about the changes for the rear. 610 up to 1700 liters in the figure and then here the length of the trunk is about one, yeah, 120 in meters or 48 inches. That's quite good and the width here is a meter of 40 inches but not quite here between the axle, between the, the wheel arches. Um, yeah, a little wider here. Underneath you can have some storage for a charging cable because you have no frung at all. The only thing is that here we cannot fold the seats because of the new executive seating. And the towing capacity has now been increased from 750 grams now to 1.7 tons for the all-wheel drive models. And if you want to see me driving the EQS, check it out right now. Or would you rather think, nah, more of a i7 BMW kind of guy?